Hello, welcome back to Project 63. And in this episode, we've got the front subframe all completed, got the brakes back on. We've done some prep work in the engine bay, gonna refit the front subframe, and then we're gonna go through the final spec of the engine for this fast road car. Right, let's get going then. Let's have a look at this front subframe. It's all been assembled now. We've got the brake assemblies in place, the steering arms, the hubs, it's all there. We did decide to keep the original subframe in one piece. So that if we ever do sell the car or want to put it back to standard, we can literally just lift the whole thing back into place. So we've got seven and a half inch Cooper S type discs. On the outside, we've got the MED hub nuts, special hub nuts we have made and the heat treated split washers so that's the washer that goes underneath the hub nut so the difference between the standard hub nuts and these quality is so much better the threads are properly formed and it gives a real nice tight fit um, no wobbling around like you find with the cheaper ones they've got the washer built in so it spreads the load and there's no stress raisers so if you look in these corners here they're nice and rounded edges rather than having a sharp corner which can break we've got the heat treated dry flanges on the end of these seven and a half inch discs. And we've also gone a bit posh. We've gone for brand new 300 M MED drive shafts. These are the Hardy Spicer type. See brand new CV joints in there. We did go to mini spares for the brand new hubs. Again, just so that we can keep the original all in one place. Steering arms, Cooper S type, all new top arms. I mean, it's a great place to start, isn't it? Having everything brand new like that. Steve's put all this together. So you see, he's actually put lock wire around there, which is quite neat. If you look here, we've got the MED tie rods that we showed you previously. So they're rose jointed at the end, solid mounted, fully adjustable. And then the adjustable lower arms as well, which are again, solid mounted. So if you're aiming to get the, the handling of your Mini as sharp as possible, then that's the way to go. A bit fierce for everyday road use, but for a weekend car, absolutely brilliant. So suspension wise, we decided to go for the red cones, which would say a fast road rally. You can use them on the race car. I used to use them on my Mini 7, um, but they're quite compliant. I also use them on my road Mini as well. And they're, they're, they're actually surprisingly supple. So it's gonna have SPAC stampers and the red cones, which you see there. And if you look from the side, you'll see we've got the MED ride height adjusters in there as well. They've got stainless steel threads so there's no chance of that going rusty nice wide platform at the top to spread the load on those red cones really easy to adjust later on and a real nice high quality upgrade so the engine bay for such a small car you'd be amazed how much work it takes to get it looking nice and shiny but um i think we've we've done a reasonable job with this it was a bit scabby it wasn't really too much rust we took all the rust back where we could treated it found a, a spray can as close a match as possible because we still don't really know what color this is. Sprayed it all in, put some new seam sealer on obviously before we did that. And here's the result. I think it's, um, it looks really tidy. We've used the Raptor up to about here. So that's got the stone chip protection in. Um, I mean, we didn't show you the whole thing because you, you're probably not gonna wanna sit at home and watch three hours of me going at it with a wire brush. Steering racks in, we've got a brand new one. Again, from Mini Spares supplied that. They also supplied the uh, brake master cylinders. We've got the original type Lockheed stamped metal type cylinders. Um, as you see, that doesn't quite go yet. So we're gonna need to shorten this hose down and put it onto the T-piece here. The other thing you might notice, which shouldn't be like this, the top engine steady bar is now, the bracket is now bolted in place. So almost finished doing everything paint wise laying underneath, putting the lines through. And I could see daylight through the edge of this bracket. It's such a thin, as standard, it's such a thin um, sheet of metal that goes on there and folds up. And I couldn't let it go. I know that it's braced at the top, but as soon as you put in over hundred horsepower through this and the top engine steady being solid mounted as well, like it is, it's just gonna rip that straight off. So that was a bit of a, a moment and we had to stop work out the way of doing it. We, not ideal to bolt it in place, but at that point we didn't really want to start welding anything on the car. So that's a shame, but it is nice and strong and that will take the power now. So really enough chat, we'll put the subframe back in and we'll be one step closer. 
And there you go, just like that, we fitted the subframe. We didn't film the whole thing. We swore quite a lot, but it's in. Mark one subframes, they're solid mounted. So you have to get it in exactly the right place as it goes in and it, it takes a little while if you've not done them recently. The later subframes are all rubber mounted and you have a little bit of leeway, a little bit of wiggle room. Um, not so much with these, but it's in now. It's all looking good. We've got the brake lines all finished. So over to Steve who is sat in reception and he's gonna talk us through the engine spec. So that's the progress on the car. We're now going to look at the engine, which we have here. It's obviously complete, it's been dynoed. So as you'll see first, it's got a pair of twin H4 carburetors. These are the ones with the longer body to them, which develop a little bit more torque. You'll notice that we've got the MED ramp pipes on, and these are all running through a standard Leyland alloy inlet manifold, which we've port matched to the cylinder head. Got the anti-vibration spacer blocks on here. And we've also fitted the larger floats and the float bowl extensions just here. More or less exactly the same setup as you would use on a historic race car on the carburetors. Okay, we've just spun the engine around now so that you can see the trumpets. Nice uh, setup, the H4 carburetors. You'll also notice it's got one of the new exhaust manifolds on. Um, we're going to put this in the car, test it with this on. It's also got the conversion. We've, we've line bored this differential housing onto a four synchro gearbox because we wanted to keep the old magic wand gear stick in the car to keep it original. Um, we've not put the linkage on yet, but that's just got to be finalized from there. So you'll notice also we've put one of our um, MED breather rocker covers on. This has got the breather pipe on the back that locates back down onto the flywheel housing. It'll then have a pipe coming from here going through into the inner wing to one of the MED catch tanks. Cylinder head is fully modified, slightly larger inlet valves, standard size exhaust valves, um, new valve springs, caps, collets, Inside there, if we just pop the cap off, it's got the MED gold 1.5 roller rockers on it. This cylinder head that we've used is one of the early types, what they call the flat head. So it's not got the scalloping into the casting as per the Metro. We wanted to use this to keep it more period to the car. You'll notice it's got 11 stud ARP fixings all around the head. Uh, we did all these modifications in the previous video, so you'll see those from there. Going on to the engine, this is the early type cylinder block, again from the previous video. It's been line bored with steel main caps on. It's been bored to plus 40 because it didn't quite clean up at plus 20. So we're on 1310 on this block. Uh, we've lightened and polished a set of a plus con rods fitted them with arp rod bolts the crankshaft is quite a, a special one really it's a metro turbo crankshaft that was perfect condition standard size so we cross drilled it wedged it we did the improved counterbalance around the big ends to get some more weight away okay we fitted the xt camshaft which is a 280 duration camshaft along with vernier timing gears and you'll also notice it's got the MED alloy timing cover and the MED crankshaft pulley, bolt and lock plate. Um, going down to the gearbox, on the gearbox we fitted one of the race straight cut synchromesh gear kits with a set of roller drop gears, the MED ATB differential fitted with a 3.4 final drive we will then run that with the hardy spicer adapters which haven't been fitted yet uh, the flywheel is one of our st2 flywheels with the ultralight en8 flywheel ultralight en8 back plate it's got the bonded clutch plate in it the rally type with an orange diaphragm all fully balanced with the crankshaft and they have it got alden distributor to match the camshaft um, we decided not to put the full oil cooler kit on this. It's only a fast road engine. 
it's not going to be used on the track at the moment if it does we'll put the cooler kit on but it's got the the black braided hose kit on down to the billet filter head we've also fitted the med alternator and just here you'll see that it's got one of our little alternator brackets that we've developed aluminium billet held on with allen cap screws just nice little touch okay so there you go that's the specification of the engine we've actually had this engine on the dyno and it produced at the dyno shop that we use 112 horsepower which is roughly where we were expecting it to be on this particular dyno you've got to note though dynos do vary you could take this same engine to another dyno and it could be plus or minus five eight horsepower so we use this dyno quite a lot and we know where the figures should be so the engine is giving 112 horsepower so there's the progress on the car that's the specification on the engine so thanks again for watching and we'll bring you some more soon <laughs>